What's up, y'all? J.R. Raymond back again. Uh, coming to you from home just because I simply want to talk about the new PBA rule going into effect on January 1st, 2022, which is the rule of no more wrist braces that have uh, correct correctioning devices that have the metal in them. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about how I feel about that, what I think, and my opinions on the entire situation. So we'll do that here in a minute. Stay tuned. All right, welcome back. So we're going to talk a little bit about the new rule, which is no more wrist guards that have correctioning positioners and uh, metal pieces or anything like that in them. You cannot use them anymore on the PBA Tour. Now, uh, from my understanding, uh, feel free to correct me on any of this stuff that I talk about because I didn't really look a ton into it. I just kind of want to talk about it for a minute. But from my understanding, it's just on the natural tour, just on the normal tour, not the PBA 50. Uh, it obviously doesn't affect... Um, league or PWBA or anything like that um, yet. Uh, I don't know if USBC will follow suit with everything. Now, keep in mind, uh, the American PBA is not the first company to put this rule in effect. Uh, the Japan PBA actually did that. I think it was a couple of years ago where they put this into effect for their PBA events as well. So, um, first things first, I'm going to say, um, unpopular opinion maybe, but I agree with this rule, and it's because of the way I uh, treat my coaching, my training, all that stuff. I actually, that's what these things are. They are training devices. Um, they're not made for uh, long-term use, in my opinion. Maybe they were at one point, but the way I see them as they're simply a training device to get you to feel a certain way, um, so that way you can then feel it and then go recreate it without it on. Um, the argument is, you know, what about the people who have weak wrists? Well, most of rev rate and everything is created um, with technique. Uh, wrist strength really isn't an issue, and there's a reason for that. It's because you're not cupping the ball the entire way. If you are, you're using way too many muscles, the things that you just don't need to do. The cupping and uncupping is literally at the bottom of the swing, and that's it. So uh, does it take strength to cup it? Yes, but anybody as a bowler, maybe you can't hold the ball like this cupped up for long periods of time, but for the split second you have to do that at the bottom of the swing, anybody can do it. If you can't, you're using too heavy of a ball. Um, you know, so, and this is one of the things I wanted to, I, I, actually I want to put a, I, I don't know whether to, I don't know whether to call it like a, a women's clinic together or just a rev rate clinic. Um, because then uh, you know anybody can be involved. I don't know how many women would actually show up to a clinic that I ran to show them proper release, proper technique at the bottom of the swing to create more rev rate. I know Daria does a, uh, a release type clinic of her own to show how she does it. Um, but uh, there's just, there's a lot of techniques that go into it, not just with wrist or forearm strength, but it's the elbow bend and everything else. So. Um, Anyway, off on a little tangent there. The, the difference that I see and the problem that I see with this is, you know, these devices automatically create stability and automatically create, um, it creates consistency at the bottom of the swing because now it takes away the ability to do things, do this one thing wrong. It takes the ability to uncup or to, uh, you know, to break down too fast. It takes that away. You know, because it keeps you in a solid, firm position the entire time. And some of these devices you can crank to the side and more cupped and everything else. You know, so it keeps you in these firm positions and they automatically create more rev rate. Now, granted, everybody knows that, you know, in order to create the super high rev rate, you can't do it with a wrist brace on because you need to be able to go from uncupped to cupped and, and vice versa more than, you know, which won't allow you with one of those devices on. You can't do that. You know, so, but somebody who has a problem with breaking their wrist down and trying to release it this way with their hand on top of the ball, it helps those types of people to keep their hand underneath it longer um, because the habit is to break the wrist down and go on top where your palm is facing down. These devices create an unfair advantage to be able to use them in this manner. Now you're going to say, well, everybody can use them. 
you know, so why would you outlaw them? I always look at the same thing with the belly putter or the anchored putter rule that they did for the PBA or for the PGA. They got rid of the belly putter, the anchor putter, because they said it took away from the skill, uh, the fundamentals. It took away from what it, from from the putting skills that uh, you needed. It, it actually it gave you an advantage to do it this way um, because it anchored, it sturdied everything. And this is the same way the wrist brace sturdies and anchors your hand into a specific spot and takes away the fundamentals of the game. It takes away the the proper use of the hand or the people who learn and, and, and do it like you know so somebody like EJ no longer I mean technically he still has an advantage of course but you know somebody would immediately gain 50 rpm just by putting a wrist brace on you know somebody like EJ can't gain 50 rpm just by putting a wrist brace on you know so it's not really something for everybody not that he needs it you know but you know what I'm saying it's just a uh, it creates better technique with a device. Any devices that create better technique shouldn't be allowed. Um, I know one guy was saying, well, what about grips? You know, grips create higher rev rate. No, it's still technique. Grips simply give you a softer feel. I mean, so I, I don't know how that would be considered higher rev rate just because it's softer. Maybe you have more grip, but you have lots of things. You can use rosin, this and that. I'm like, well, it has a quarter inch lift, so it makes it to where your fingers are under. Okay, well, then don't use grips and put them a quarter under and you can create the exact same thing. You know, so it, it, that's not even a fair comparison in my opinion. And they say, well, what about, you know, sliding, you know, removable soles? You know, that creates a more consistency. I mean, again, that's, I think, comparing apples to oranges. I don't think that creates an unfair advantage in any different way, you know, so um, because that's just combating the playing field, not manipulating ball roll or anything like that. So I actually, I, I may lose some followers over this video. So be it, I guess. Um, but I agree with the rule. I think this is a very good rule. I think it's a, uh, I think it was well needed. I think it was well overdue. I think it should have been put into place a long time ago. Um, you know, there's always going to be the people that say, well, you know, what about two-handed bowling? You know, shouldn't that be banned because that's creating an unfair advantage and, you know, this and that. And I was like, ah, that's a topic for a different day. Some people say yes, some people say no. Uh, I could care less on that, to be completely honest. Uh, I'm going to coach and teach. And, you know, if you're two-handed, I'm going to coach you. If you're one-handed, I'm going to coach you. And if you need to learn to get out of the thumb faster, I'm going to teach you how to do that. But um, I'm going to... I'll maybe show you with a wrist brace how it should feel to get your hand under it and see the difference between it. Then we're going to take it off and you're going to recreate that. You know, we're going to do follow line drills and you're going to try and figure out how to do it without. Sure, you may get some soreness in the forearm, but that's how you build up the muscle. You say, well, what about the people who, you know, they have bad wrists and they can't do uh, any of this stuff? Well, you could still wear a wrist brace. It just can't be one that positions or locks your hand into place. You know, so the wrist braces are still fine. You just can't use one that has metal or anything like that. Use the wrist brace, use the wraps, use whatever you got to do to keep the pain away, then create whatever you got to create. You know, so uh, this doesn't affect anybody on the, on the kids tour, I don't think. I don't know of anybody that ha is having any type of success that uses a wrist brace out there. I can't think of anybody. Um, you know, so anybody that does use them now that bulls, you know, in the re I don't know if it affects the regional tour or not, um, but any if it does, then anybody that's using them now, hit me up. Come out, come for... You know some help I'll show you how to do it without actually having without having a wrist brace on we'll, we'll show you how to do the correct things or at least get you going in the right direction and then you can get it better and better as you go so that's my thoughts on it let me know what you think do you think this is a good move do you think they should be banned do you think that you know maybe they overstepped a little bit here what's your thoughts on it let me know in the comments below but make sure to like and subscribe share this video around and you know let's have some good conversation and keep it keep it uh, keep it classy don't be calling each other names and all that. So until next time, guys, I'm out of here. We'll see you guys later. Take care.